don't misunderstand me. The last couple of videos I've made, um, it's not sadness. Uh, it's a vlog. And, and what I'm trying to chronicle is just a regular kind of person uh, dealing with this sudden change that has occurred uh, in our lives, globally, frankly. Um, I'm not special, and my concerns are, are no different than anybody else's. I've got the same, same fears, and I'm just trying to process all of that right now. Is, is what these videos are about. This is how I process. Uh, it's a, a sign right there. Stay home, save lives, COVID-19. They remind me of that. You know, it's interesting. As I uh, was on my way to work today, um, based on the weekend that I had, I, I kind of wasn't thinking a whole lot about the, uh, hey, just come on over, help yourself. You almost saw me die right here on national television. I wasn't really thinking so much about this whole CV-19 thing, to tell you the truth. And then I saw one of those signs and it sort of brought it back into the forefront of my thoughts. But I'm just processing this right now. And I would say it, I would not be genuine if I was driving around just making a lot of jokes right now. Being the comedian. A, uh, some of the stuff's not appropriate to joke about. B, I'd be lying to you. I'd be faking it. I'd be like, hey, let me tell you a knock-knock joke when that's not how I feel inside. So, you know, on the Railroad Channel, I got to bring the game uh, all the time. I, I can't have a wham wham On that channel, that's not a vlog. This is. So that's kind of where some of the stuff's coming from. But, you know, as I said, I, I just said, my, my weekend was, was interesting. Uh, Friday, I got home and got to see that beautiful wife of mine, Cindy Brown, the queen of everything. And, you know, our fears came true. Her boss cut her pay. It was that or lay her off. And I told her, I said, well, based on what I heard the president say, uh, laying off would have been a better option because you can get 100% of your paycheck. That's like the government backing up unemployment. I thought that was pretty cool. But, you know, it is what it is. We're... we're we live kind of paycheck to paycheck like everybody else, and right now we're down about 1800 bucks a month. I don't know where we're going to pick it up. Other than to just not pay our bills, which is the decision we came to. Uh, sorry, people. I need to eat, and therefore, I need gas to get to work, and you know, this kind of stuff. So, therefore, yeah, uh, mortgage payment can come later, and credit cards and all that stuff. We're just going to have to wait. And that kind of eased a burden. Now that we're dealing with it, we said, screw it. I'm not paying any bills. I'm going to live like a, I don't know, ghetto person or something. I don't know. Like, that was inappropriate. Whatever I'm trying to say. But then, um, even still, Saturday, we, we did our live show for the Railroad Channel, Tracksmack. And Cindy and I both were trying very hard to be uh, entertaining and fun and... Um, you know, the stuff that people tune into that show for, engaging. And it was a lot of work. I mean, we spent everything we had in one hour. And then I spent the rest of my Saturday, frankly, working on a video for a project for a different channel. And concluded it at the end of the day with, I just wasted a whole day. Uh, Nothing was working out right, and it was very frustrated. So, actually, Cindy and I just stopped and uh, said, screw it, we're gonna watch a movie. We don't watch movies, we don't have time to do that. We're always working on a project. And I said, I don't feel like making any more video right now. I, I don't feel like talking in front of a camera. And so, we, uh, we sat down and started watching one of our favorite movies, which is actually appropriate to what we're going through. It's called Live Free or Die Hard. Uh, in that case, it was a fire sale that uh, some tech junkies put together to bring the nation to its knees. In our case, it's a little inconvenient little bug that's scaring the shit out of everybody and causing other problems. But either way, same response, panic in the streets. But then something changed, I guess, by Sunday. I think I came to terms with this. They signed the big bailout package, so that's fine. I guess we'll see some money for that. I guess the economy will keep going. Whatever. Uh, but Saturday, I, I just decided, or Sunday, I 
just got down to working on, uh, oh, ha. Sunday I finished working on my crane that I was building for my port, and I set it up in the port, and you know, I tried every which way but Sunday to justify that big ass crane being in my port. And it just doesn't work. The crane doesn't work. I've spent three weeks working on this thing and it doesn't work in the port. So it's still a good model. So I'm gonna find, uh, invent an industry to stick that sucker in. Going back to the port, let me get some little cheese ball gantry crane and put it on there. Boom, done, port's all. But that was frustrating. So here's how I fixed all of that. I went out and shot five neighbors. No. See, you want some jokes? That's all I got, people. No, my main line for my railroad, which is the track that the train, like all the main trains run on, has been down for about two months because of another project I'm working on. And I just decided, screw it. And I had some music going, I had some beers popping, and I went through and I ran that main line in its new location, put in a switch motor, which turns the turnout for me automatically, and uh, started running my trains again. And just that soothing time just calmed my action down. I just calmed down. And you know, I got out of bed this morning, like I said, I wasn't really tripping on this stuff anymore. I think I've processed it. I think I've got my head around it now. Uh, we're all in the same boat together. They, we, we can't let the entire planet fail. So, uh, eh, I guess, again, we go back to what they say in uh, AA, and that is, hey, it's just one day at a time. Just do the next indicated thing. Whatever's next, that's what we'll, we'll focus on, concentrate on. We're not going to focus on the 1,500 different scenarios about how this plays out. It's too much overhead in the brain for that. So just, what am I doing today? What's the threat today? How do I deal with it today? And I'll let tomorrow take care of itself. And I can't obviously do crap about yesterday. It's gone. So eh, that's kind of where I'm at right now on the deal, I guess. But even still, eh, you get to work. Reduced numbers of manpower. Uh, my assistant superintendent said to me, um, we were talking about coming to work and risking getting sick versus staying at home and the government's going to pay your unemployment. And, uh, you know, C the uh, CDC says that in California there's like 2,000 cases of the bug. But I don't believe that's true, to tell you the truth. Because I personally know four people who have it. And my assistant superintendent in his neighborhood knows four people who have it. That's eight people. Confirmed. In my case, three of the four were hospitalized. Two of them were rushed by ambulance over the weekend. So it's a significant deal. And I'm one person I know four. He's one person he knows four. With all the millions of people in Southern California, I, or in just in California, I gotta believe that 2,000 isn't the number, frankly. It's not the number. So when we were talking about, you know, risking coming to work and getting sick and taking it back to our families, and my assistant superintendent says, well, it's your call to me. I said, no, it isn't. It's the owner of our company's call. However, if somebody that has been working on this job doesn't show up because they've got the bug, I will be very inclined to stand down at that point because now it's way too close to home. All of our containment measures, everything else, apparently not gonna work. Uh, we gotta kill this thing, it's gotta die. So we can all move on. That's where I'm at on the And then of course, the owner of the property again, this little guy, we've got some kind of a Marriott is one of the owners of the brand that we're using. And we got this thing with Marriott supposed to like do a walkthrough at certain stages of development. And this one's gonna be virtual. I don't even know how that's gonna work. And all the, owner, the hotel owner of this property can think about is, are we gonna hit that date on time? First of all, have you not listened to a single phone call or read a single email or daily report telling you 
that you have delayed this job. I won't see half of what you're supplying until July. What's April? What the hell? So they want us to put in the carpet and the tile without all the cabinets. The carpet and tile finish up to the cabinets. How's that gonna work, G? Well, we'll be willing to pay a little bit of money to get them to come back and, and tune it up when it's done. What's well, a little bit of money? To do the work twice? Because that's what it boils down to. And he ain't gonna wanna pay it. He'll freak out. Why am I going through all this? It's like this, this the owner of the property is like a rich kid spending daddy's money playing hotel guy. So he just doesn't get the reality, the gravity of what's really happening. So I had to basically respectfully tell him to step off today. So, but come in and, and I solved some problems today and uh, made some phone calls, put some shit together. And, and in that, it kind of seemed normal, like a regular business day. So, um, yeah, so don't misunderstand me. I, I'm not sad. I'm not depressed. I have a hard time being a clown right now, to be honest with you. But I'm sure that'll uh, make its way back once the dust all settles and we all kind of get used to this. So, uh, there you go. We'll see what tomorrow holds for us in this crazy new world that we live in.